Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Hi there, bed crimers. Hope you're all doing well. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out the channel. Do me a favor, if you find you enjoyed this content or learned something, smash that like button and consider subscribing. Now, let's dig in. Jeffrey Lacasse, a professor in social work at Florida State University, and Wendy Adelson's nine-month-long boyfriend, starting in September of 2013, was interviewed by the police several times, and this was mostly because Wendy Adelson suggested that Lacasse was a potential suspect in the murder of her ex-husband, Danny Markell, in July of 2014. When Lacasse spoke to the authorities once a few days after the crime on July 21st, he shared fascinating details about the Adelson family dynamic. Today, I'm going to give you the highlights of those interviews. I believe they shed light on things like why Charlie Adelson was okay setting up a murder for hire plot and why his parents Donna and Harvey are so supportive of him. Let's begin. Lacasse said he and Wendy started dating in September of 2013 and continued all through the fall. After Christmas break, they had a conversation and decided to date more seriously. By March of 2014, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. Lacasse spent a ton of time with Wendy in the six months prior to the crime. He slept over at her house nearly every night when her two young sons were with their father, Danny Markell. Lacasse made it very clear that he was in love with Wendy, like he had her up on a pedestal. She was his goddess. She kind of had him under her spell. Sounds like she might have been a dynamo in the sack. Lacasse hinted at that, and he had also been co-parenting her sons. Lacasse said Wendy was in South Florida prior to Danny's death. Lacasse said that he'd never heard her more miserable while she was in South Florida. Florida. You see, South Florida, really Miami, was Wendy's happy place. That's where her parents lived. That's where her brother Charlie lived. It was her desire to move back to South Florida to be closer to her parents and her brother Charlie. Lacoste sent Wendy an email on the Saturday after the crime saying he was there for her, and she never responded. He also sent her a book about grieving for her young kids. In this first interview, Lacoste expressed that he thought it possible that maybe Wendy had a secret boyfriend in South Florida. He suspected there had to be a guy down there because A, Wendy went to South Florida like all the time. And B, when she was down there, she was not as constant in her communication with Lacasse. Seems like a reasonable assumption. Lacasse was quickly ruled out as a suspect, by the way, because he had receipts showing he was out of town when Markel was harmed. By the way, Lacasse made it clear he was living in a crappy apartment in a not-so-nice part of Tallahassee when he was dating Wendy. He said he was saving up to buy a house, and when he traveled during the period of the crime, Lacasse said he stayed in a cheap motel. Do you guys find it strange that Wendy was dating a guy who was living so lean? Obviously, we don't know her, but she comes from a well-to-do family, although they did lose their wealth at one point. But Wendy apparently was very impressed with Danny Markell's Harvard pedigree. You'd think a woman who loves Miami, is used to the good life, has wealthy parents, would want a guy who didn't maybe stay at the budgetel, who maybe stayed at more upscale hotels. I'm just saying, I don't know. There's a disconnect here with Wendy and Jeffrey Lacasse, in my opinion. I know he looks an awful lot like Danny Markell, and this disconnect does make me wonder if she picked Lacasse to be her fall guy, to be someone that they tried to pin the crime on. Now, right out of the gate, Lacasse said, if I were you guys, Mr. Investigators, I would look at Charlie Adelson as a possible suspect. Lacasse described Charlie, whom He'd only met in person one time as, one, very angry, two, a person who would set off the cop's radar if he were in front of them 
because he set off Lacasse's radar. And Lacasse explained that he used to do some forensic psychology. Lacasse said, Charlie is a weird guy and was a conduct disordered kid. Not knowing what that meant, I looked it up. And per the Nationwide Children's Org website, conduct disordered children exhibit behavioral and emotional problems characterized by a disregard for others. Such kids have trouble following rules and behaving in socially acceptable ways. Their behavior can be hostile and sometimes physically violent. Many factors seem to cause this disorder. Some kids have an impairment in the frontal lobe of the brain. Some have experienced abuse, parental rejection or neglect. Some have other psychiatric disorders. Some come from parents diagnosed with ADHD, alcohol abuse, depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. Some have experienced maternal psychopathy, meaning their mothers suffer from psychopathy. Lacasse also emphasized that Charlie hated Markel. It was in this interview that Lacasse said Wendy had confided in him that her brother Charlie had looked into all options of getting rid of Danny Markel. Lacasse stated that Wendy confided this in September of 2013, so roughly a year before the crime. For the person who said Lacasse could have saved Danny Markel, life, I think it's important to recognize that Wendy told Lacoste this hitman stuff a year before the crime. Lacoste stated that hearing Wendy say this gave him the chills, but he clearly didn't think Charlie was actually going to do this. I think it's unfair to blame Lacoste for Danny's death, just my opinion. Now, Lacoste also told the investigators that Charlie is a very successful dentist, He's actually a periodontist, but he reeks of antisocial behavior. Lacoste mentioned that Charlie had a close friend who was a Navy SEAL or Special Forces. He also pointed out that Charlie had a lot of resources, meaning a lot of money, money that could be used to pay for hitmen. Lacoste also described Charlie talking about intimate act that he'd done with his then girlfriend Katie McBanawa to punish her. Now Charlie confessed this while he, Lacoste, and his sister Wendy were sitting in Charlie's hot tub on the evening of March 15th in 2014. They had dined out earlier with Katie McBanawa and she went home and then Charlie Lacoste and Wendy went back to Charlie's house. Lacoste thought this was so wrong, he said. Who talks about such things in front of his sister? And he also said that Charlie's sense of social norms is just off. And Lacoste stated he could see Charlie doing this, basically setting up this crime without telling Wendy. He said Charlie was very protective of Wendy and he was very cocky, arrogant, narcissistic, aggressive, argumentative, focused only on himself, had three girlfriends at a time without any qualms about it. Charlie just sounds like such a charming guy, right? Lacoste also said Charlie popped into his head 20 seconds after hearing about the crime. Jeffrey Lacoste also stated he and Wendy fed her and Danny's sons bacon regularly. Danny Markell wanted his sons on a kosher diet. He mentioned Donna's suggestion to convert the boys to Catholicism just to tick Markell off. Lacoste laughed and said there was so much passive aggressive behavior. He also described the Adelsons as unhealthily enmeshed, that Wendy is not really an adult. Apparently, every time she drove down to South Florida, which we know was often, parents, Donna and Harvey, would drive up to Tallahassee in order to make the drive back down to South Florida with Wendy. And that drive, from what I recall, is about seven hours. Lacoste said Donna and Harvey didn't trust Wendy to drive herself, and she was still the baby of the family, despite being 35 years old at the time with two young children. So I do believe that Donna and Harvey raised Wendy in a way that led Wendy not to believe in herself, not to have confidence in herself. 
This is why maybe she was asking for advice all the time about things that a teenager might ask advice about, but not an adult. Lacoste was so right about Charlie. He even pointed out that Charlie had friends on both sides of the tracks. He was street smart, rich, so he would not have committed the crime himself, but instead would have hired some thugs off the street to do it for him. And Lacoste said he heard Charlie say several times, I'd love to do in Danny Markell. He didn't use the words do in, but you get the idea. Jeffrey Lacoste then said that both Wendy and Charlie are so sociopathic in that they can lie to your face without any problem. He also stated that Wendy's grandparents were Holocaust survivors. So now I'm wondering if the mental health issues that Donna Adelson allegedly suffers from and that Charlie and Wendy may suffer from could be traced back to their grandparents. If the grandparents were in the Holocaust, they likely had traumatic experiences that may have affected their mental health. And did they set the stage for Donna and maybe Harvey too to be overly controlling, and overly protective with their kids? Did Harvey and Donna also push their kids to excel to the point where it did damage to the kids? I believe that things my grandmother's mother suffered in her life affected my grandmother, who then in turn did things to affect my mom and also me in not such nice ways. I do think that trauma and its after effects can be passed down generationally. If we look at Donna Adelson, if we look at Charlie Adelson, they do seem to have some antisocial personality traits, and I don't think they were necessarily born with these. So why are they the way they are? What happened to Donna in her childhood that turned her into Donna the adult? And what happened to Charlie, too, to lead him to be a conduct-disordered child? Now, Jeffrey Lacoste also said that when Donna and Harvey were with him and Wendy socially, that Donna and Harvey barely spoke any words to him. They barely conversed. That's a rather antisocial way to treat your daughter's new boyfriend, a boyfriend who sounds like he tried to be respectful to Wendy, at least up until the point where he believed she was cheating on him. I'm assuming he would have tried to be very polite to her parents because he really adored Wendy. He said he loved her. I think he would have wanted to impress her parents. We know Donna and Harvey stopped talking to their eldest son when he was planning to marry a non-Jewish girl. This led Robert to drop the non-Jewish girlfriend and then marry a Jewish woman who he then quickly divorced and he ended up back with his Indian girlfriend who he then married and I think they're still married. Personally, I think it's unusual that Donna and Harvey were so overly involved in trying to control who their children married. But again, that could harken back to their parents being Holocaust survivors and them wanting to help rebuild the tribe. The Adelson children, Robert, Charlie, Wendy, sound like they tried very hard to please mom and dad, even when it caused them great suffering and bad marriages. Something's not kosher with the Adelson family, pun intended. Something's not healthy in the Adelson family dynamic. I don't know exactly what caused it, but I think it's pretty clear. I'd love to know more about Donna's childhood, Harvey's childhood, perhaps some of the answers lie there. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories.